So many of you are aware that fasting is my gospel. It's one of the few things that I know for a fact would radically improve the health conditions of our community overnight if we chose to embrace it. So in this video, I'm going to uh, lay out several benefits of fasting that our community needs to be well aware of. All right, so stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? This is Edward Williams, licensed physician assistant, founder and creator of Health Body Necessary. And I want to welcome you to our channel where we talk about all things black health improvement and insulin resistance. So if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you can be notified for every time we go live and do a video on Mondays and Thursdays. All right, so this video is a little different. I'm actually headed inside the gym, um, but I had something in my mind I wanted to talk about. Um, and I'll try to make it quick, but it most likely will not be quick. All right, so we're going to have a conversation about fasting and how it helps us uh, improve our overall health dramatically. Um, you know, with Health Binding Me Necessary, our mission is to aggressively inspire and radically improve the health conditions of the black community uh, by any means necessary. Uh, and we do that by focusing intensely on insulin resistance. The reason why we focus on insulin resistance is because insulin resistance is the platform that so many of these conditions that we're dealing with is sitting on top of. Uh, when I'm talking about conditions, I'm talking about high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol, uh, type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, uh, PCOS, gynecomastia, obesity, and on and on and on and on and on. So what I'm going to do is uh, explain how fasting improves all of those conditions by really improving insulin resistance, really reversing insulin resistance. All right. Okay. So insulin resistance, as, as you've heard me say before, and I will continue to say, uh, insulin resistance is not a disease and is not a malfunction. Uh, insulin resistance is an adaptive mechanism. Your body is doing this on purpose. Insulin resistance is something that can be activated and deactivated. So let's talk about briefly uh, what insulin resistance is. Um, and then I'll make other videos going uh, more in depth about insulin resistance as well as each of these conditions that I'm going to list out. So insulin resistance. Uh, insulin is a hormone that is secreted from your pancreas. Uh, insulin has multiple roles, but for the, uh, the sake of this conversation, we're going to talk about the, uh, the storage role uh, that insulin has, uh, particularly when we're talking about glucose. So, so when we eat food, uh, that food is going to be broken down into uh, micronutrients. Those macronutrients are going to be broken down to micronutrients. Uh, the micronutrients are going to be the uh, fatty acids, uh, the amino acids, uh, as well as the glucose. In the particular case for the glucose, um, that glucose is going to cause elevation in our overall uh, blood sugar. That's what glucose, blood sugar, and blood glucose are the same thing. Uh, that is going to cause an increase in our blood sugar. That sugar, that glucose, needs to go inside the cell so that the cells can run. So we have well over 37 trillion cells. Uh, they all need energy uh, for their metabolism, to metabolize and do their processes. Uh, that glucose needs to go into the cell. The way that the glucose gets into the cell when we have a, uh, a surplus is via insulin. So all of those cells, they have insulin receptors. Uh, those receptors are able to downregulate and upregulate when it needs to. So insulin is going to go into the insulin receptor of the cells that need more glucose, and it's going to allow that glucose to go into the cells. All of those cells, they have a capacity. They're not able to just take in an unlimited uh, amount of glucose. They have a capacity. And so when these cells have met their capacity and they're no longer able to safely take in glucose, they will downregulate the insulin receptors. When those insulin receptors become downregulated, uh, insulin is no longer able to stimulate the receptor, meaning that the glucose will now have to remain outside. The body is doing this on purpose because... It is better to have a surplus of glucose in the bloodstream versus having that surplus in the uh, cell. And so these cells, uh, trillions of cells, if you have a constant supply, a constant oversupply of glucose, your cells are going to make the intelligent decision to downregulate the insulin receptors because they have more than enough. Now, when this happens, you're going to have elevated levels of glucose in your bloodstream. 
This elevated level of blue glucose in your bloodstream will cause the pancreas to secrete more insulin so that it can find other cells uh, that the glucose can go into. And if the glucose is not able to go into the cells, the body will now make the intelligent decision to uh, redirect the glucose, the blood sugar, to the liver. And then it will store the liver, uh, it will store the glucose inside the liver. Uh, primarily, it wants to store it in the form of glycogen. Glycogen is a stored form of glucose. Uh, once the cells in the liver, the hepatocytes, uh, once they are over at, once they are filled with uh, glycogen, because, so just like your other cells, uh, the liver cells, the, the hepatocytes, are not able to take in an unlimited amount of uh, glycogen. And so they have a capacity as well. Once the liver has met its capacity as far as how much glycogen it can store, it will now have to convert that glycogen or the glucose to fat. That fat needs to be shipped out to the fat cells. So when we look at uh, how high levels of blood glucose uh, affects the cells, uh, affects the uh, insulin receptors, and how it downregulates the insulin receptors, we are now going to have a situation where the insulin is going to be high, the glucose is going to be high. When this is done chronically because we're eating frequently, uh, because we uh, the foods, type of foods that we're eating or uh, processed, uh, this is going to cause a chronic level of uh, insulin resistance as well as chronic level of hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. And this is insulin resistance. Um, insulin resistance is a protective mechanism. The cells no longer have capacity uh, to take in more glucose. Therefore, the cells have down-regulated the insulin receptors. So that is insulin resistance. Now what I'm going to walk you through is how insulin resistance is affecting everything else. Uh, all these other conditions uh, that we're going to talk about and how fasting helps you not only improve and reverse insulin resistance, it's going to help you deal with these conditions that healthcare considers to be diseases. And I'm telling you that they're not diseases. Uh, these are the uh, results or these are the uh, signs and symptoms of insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is the result of the unhealthy foods as well as the frequent eating. So one of the most obvious things that we see or we know about with insulin resistance is uh, the elevation in the blood sugar. That's because your cells are at full capacity. There's nowhere else for the blood sugar to go other than the liver. But what happens when you have a surplus of uh, glycogen in the liver, that now needs to be converted to fat. But that whole time, you still have elevations of blood sugar in the bloodstream. Over time, that high level of glucose is going to start to stick to the red blood cell. And when it starts to stick to the red blood cell, depending on how high the glucose is in the bloodstream, you're going to have more of those glucose molecules, uh, what they call glycate, uh, become glycated to the red blood cells. And this becomes something that you can actually measure. And this is where they get the A1C, the hemoglobin A1C, uh, because you're going to see just uh, how much of that glucose is becoming uh, sticky or glycated to the red blood cell. And the higher it is, the higher your A1C is going to be. And so once you start getting an A1C over 6.5, this is what they consider to be type 2 diabetes. So let's make sure we understand that type 2 diabetes is really just a measure of the A1C, the hemoglobin uh, A1C. Uh, the hemoglobin A1C is increasing because of the high amounts of blood sugar. The high amounts of blood sugar is causing glycation to take place with the red blood cells, specifically uh, the hemoglobin aspect of the cell. So the higher your blood sugar is, the more you're going to have glycated to the red blood cell. And when you take your, do your blood work, uh, this is going to be reflected on the A1C. And so once you start to get an A1C over 6.5, it's considered to be di diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Uh, A1C of 5.7 to 6.4 is prediabetes. And so that essentially is what we're talking about with uh, type 2 diabetes. Now, when you're fasting, guess what? You're not bringing any fuel source. You're not bringing any food source. And so you're not bringing in any additional food source. That means that the amino acids and the glucose is not going to be increasing from outside elements. Uh, and this is going to allow the body time to use the glucose that's already in the bloodstream. So remember, uh, glucose is supposed to be used by the cells that we have. However, if they're at full capacity, they're not going to be used. So with the fasting, this is going to allow your 
your cells to utilize the glucose that it already has just by doing our daily living. Uh, this is what they call the BMR. This is your basal metabolic rate. Um, when you're just doing your daily activity, whether this is just laying down, reading, walking around, whatever you're doing, uh, the glucose that is present in your cells is going to be used. Your cells are going to get to a point where it no longer has enough glucose, and so it's going to need more glucose. Well, that glucose is now going to come from your bloodstream. Uh, the same high blood sugar that you had will now be used to fuel those cells because you're no longer bringing any food. And so this is the next step. When you continue the fast, that glucose is going to get to a point where it's not enough glucose in the bloodstream. So now the liver will now need to release the glycogen, which is the stored form of glucose, and utilize that uh, glucose for fuel. And this is how you continue, this is how you begin to decrease your blood sugar. So one of the first benefits with fasting is that it improves and reverses insulin resistance. But along with the improving and reversing insulin resistance comes a whole onslaught of other benefits, uh, such as the decreasing of blood sugar. I told you what uh, type 2 diabetes is essentially uh, elevated levels of uh, hemoglobin A1C, and if you're bringing down your blood sugar and the levels of uh, glycation that was taking place on your cells last month is now decreasing, your A1C will now start to decrease as well. And so fasting helps to lower your blood sugar, which over time will lower your A1C, which will reverse your type 2 diabetes if done long enough and appropriately. So that's one of the first benefits of fasting. Next, fasting helps to decrease inflammation. So just like insulin resistance is not a disease or a malfunction or a dysfunction, inflammation is not a disease and it is not a malfunction. Inflammation serves a purpose. Inflammation is a protective mechanism. And if we did not have the ability to mount an inflammatory process, we would be in a lot of trouble. We would be in a lot of danger and ultimately we would die. So in the case of uh, fasting, insulin resistance and inflammation, we have to understand that hyperinsulinemia, which is the state of having high insulin levels, this is extremely inflammatory uh, to the blood vessels in our body. Uh, having high amounts of glucose is also inflammatory uh, to our body as well. And so when you think about, I want you to picture having high levels of glucose as being something like a sandpaper, a low grit sandpaper gently brushing against your arterial walls, your endothelium. And so when that is taking place, just like outside of your skin, if I was to take a sandpaper and just start brushing against your skin, over time, this will cause damage to the lining of your skin. Uh, but then I would start to uh, also cause a cut, uh, a bruise, uh, an abrasion of your skin. And your body is going to mount an inflammatory process because this is how the body is going to protect itself. This inflammatory process is going to bring in uh, multiple beneficial properties uh, to help heal that area. And so inflammation serves a purpose. However, in the case of high blood sugar and high uh, insulin, over time, this causes even more problems. And so that inflammation is done uh, to the lining of the artery, the endothelium lining. Uh, and this happens all over your body. It's not just like it's going to happen in one area. It's taking place all over your body. And so with inflammation, this, of course, is going to cause several other things to take place, uh, which leads us into our next benefit, which is cholesterol. So when your lining of your artery is damaged, your body is going to use cholesterol to actually repair it. That's right. Cholesterol, once again, is not a disease. Uh, there is no good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. That is all marketing. Uh, there is one type of cholesterol, and that is cholesterol. Uh, yes, you do have a low-density lipoprotein and a high-density lipoprotein than a very low-density lipoprotein, uh, but these are proteins. They're not even cholesterol. Uh, the only cholesterol you have is cholesterol. That's it. Mark good cholesterol, bad cholesterol is all marketing. So cholesterol has a purpose. And one of the roles, because cholesterol has many roles, uh, one of the purposes of uh, cholesterol is to help repair the tissue in your body. In the, in the uh, situation we're talking about with the inflammation uh, being caused by the high levels of glucose and insulin, that is causing damage to the lining of your artery. Uh, that damage to the lining of your artery would need to be repaired. 
uh, the main uh, ingredient that your body's going to use to repair that lining is cholesterol. And so your body's going to increase cholesterol on purpose so that it can repair your arteries. This is all being done on purpose. You see, they the way they explain it to you is so that you can take medications. I, I know it sounds like I'm just being petty, uh, but this is really what's going on. They're explaining it to you in a way, you know, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, get the bad cholesterol down. It doesn't work like that. There's cholesterol, cholesterol, and your body needs cholesterol in order to repair the blood vessels. Uh, the blood vessels are being damaged by the insulin, high levels of insulin, as well as the high levels of glucose. This is causing inflammation. That inflammation will now try to repair itself. And part of the repair process is to increase cholesterol so that it can be it can use that to actually patch up the walls. Now, over time, if this continues to happen, which that's what happens in most cases, uh, our eating habits continue uh, to be bad. Uh, the frequency of eating continues to be high. And so this is a process where it continues. So the damage continues, the repair process continues. The damage continues, the repair process continues. And so this becomes a, uh, a process where the repair becomes, the area of repair becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so if you think about like patching a wall or patching uh, any type of lining or something, if you patch it up and then I come back through and I cut it again, I damage it again, and then you patch it up, and I come through and cut it and I damage it again and you patch it up, you're going to start to see that the level of the patch is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, we're talking about the damage being done in the lining of the artery. We have to understand that if your artery is only this big around in radius, uh, and I'm telling you, I'm sorry, circumference, and I'm telling you that uh, the repair is taking place. And so that patch begins right here. And then the patch begins right here. And then the patch, you can see that the area that your blood has to flow uh, decreases. And so, with that area decreasing as far as uh, the room for your blood to flow, in order for blood to get by that area, guess what? Your blood pressure needs to increase. Hence, high blood pressure. And so most people who have hypertension or high blood pressure have insulin resistance. They are insulin resistance. And so your blood pressure has to adapt to a lot of these changes that are going on. And so once again, High blood pressure itself is not a disease. High blood pressure is an adaptive mechanism. Um, high blood pressure is necessary. If you didn't have the ability to increase your blood pressure, guess what? Like I said, with everything else, then you would die. There's no following up. There's no uh, you know, going to the emergency room. If you did not have the ability to increase the contractility of your heart or increase the rate of your heart or cause vasoconstriction, then you die right then and there. Once again, Western medicine is teaching that these are all dysfunctional things taking place. And we need to throw that line of thinking in the trash can because it does not serve us any, uh, it's, not, it's not beneficial for us, uh, but it is beneficial to everybody else. Then other industries, the food industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the healthcare industry, the insurance industry, all those folks, it's beneficial to them, but it's not beneficial for us. So uh, cholesterol increases, uh, blood pressure increases, Another thing that uh, high insulin levels uh, will cause is something called arteriosclerosis. So atherosclerosis, this is where we're talking about the plaque buildup. Arteriosclerosis is where we're talking about the stiffening and the hardening of the arteries. So your arteries should be flexible. Your arteries should uh, have the ability to uh, stretch and rebound, uh, recoil. Your, your arteries should be something, it, they should not be stiff, hard, uh, and unable to adapt to the pressure. However, when you have high levels of insulin, this is what takes place. Uh, the high levels of insulin will cause the arteries to now stiffen. With, the, with those stiff arteries, you're now going to have a reduction in blood flow because you have one, you have the plaque that's building up, and then two, you have the arteries that are stiffening. And so when you have that reduced blood flow going through the area and the blood pressure needs to increase to get it by, usually what's supposed to happen in healthy arteries is the arteries are supposed to have the ability to expand and then recoil, expand and then recoil. But when those arteries are stiff, they don't expand the way they need to. And so that will now decrease the amount of blood flow to those areas. And this is uh, something that we see particularly in the, uh, the smaller arteries. So the arteries in your uh, your eye, the blood flow to your eye will be decreased. Uh, the blood flow to your, your kidneys will be decreased. Uh, the blood flow to your uh, 
your your toes will be decreased. So the blood flow to all your small extremities are going to be decreased uh, because of the arterial sclerosis that's taking place on top of the atherosclerosis that's taking place on top of the inflammation that's taking place. And so you see how this all plays upon each other. And this is why we can't uh, continue to separate these things as if they're separate, uh, isolated events. Many of these events are coming from uh, one big event, uh, which is uh, the standard American diet. Next, uh, one of the, the most obvious benefits of fasting is the weight loss. So I use weight loss because that's what everybody understands, but I'm particularly talking about fat loss. And when I'm talking about fat loss, I'm particularly talking about the visceral fat. So the visceral fat is the fat that is engulfed in our organs. Um, fat is an organ. Fat does not belong in organs. However, when we are eating, oh, hold on, it's getting hot. So, when we're eating frequently, uh, when the foods that we're eating are unhealthy, uh, but it's particularly the, the frequency of the eating when that's happening over and over. So, as I told you before, uh, the liver only has a limited capacity of space as pertains to the glucose. And so, once that capacity is met, the liver will now need to convert that glycogen into fat because it needs to go somewhere. And so, your body will now start to... Uh, transform that glycogen into fat and ship it out in a protein called LDL, low density lipoprotein. Uh, the purpose of this is going to be so that it can go to your fat cells. However, when you are eating frequently, a lot of that fat is going to be uh, stored in organs and that's not where they belong. But if you're eating so fast, the, the liver is going to do the best it can uh, to properly ship it out to the fat cells. But when you're eating so frequently and the foods that you're eating are so bad, it's going to be stored in your liver, which is going to cause fatty liver. Uh, it's also going to be stored in your pancreas, which is going to be called fatty pancreas. Uh, it's also going to be stored in other areas such as your heart as well and your muscle as well. And so you're going to start to have this infiltration of uh, fat inside of your organs. And fat does not belong in your organ, uh, any of your organs. And so when we're talking about uh, weight loss, I want you to know that I'm specifically talking about fat loss and I'm specifically talking about visceral fat loss. Uh, this is the fat that's in our organs. Uh, when you start to have fat in your organs, this is going to decrease the, uh, the functionality of those organs. And so if you have a fatty liver, which fasting helps to improve or reverse fatty liver, you're going to have a decreased function of your liver. If you have fatty pancreas, um, which fasting helps to reverse fatty pancreas, you're going to also have a decrease in the function of the pancreas, which is secretion of insulin. One of the, one of the uh, functions of the pancreas is to secrete insulin. However, when you have uh, fat infiltrating the uh, pancreatic cells, you're going to have a decrease in insulin secretion. So fasting over time, when you're fasting for 16 hours, 18 hours, uh, 24 hours, 48 hours, what's going to start to happen, once again, is that amount of uh, glucose that you have available in your bloodstream is going to decrease, which is going to cause the liver to release uh, glucose into your bloodstream. But over time, the liver only has enough glu uh, glucose, glycogen, to last you for about 10 to 12 hours. Everybody's different. Uh, and then what the body's going to have to do now is turn to the fat reserves for fuel. That's why you have fat. We have fat for reserves. Uh, people keep thinking that you're going to starve if you're not eating every two to three hours. Uh, once again, that's a marketing uh, strategy. Uh, this is how they sell food. This is how they sell supplements. This is how they sell medications. Um, but it's not based in science. And so once your body is out of that uh, glycogen from the liver, now you're going to have to call on the fat. However, the fat that your body is going to use for fuel is not going to be the fat that we want. So we want to lose the fat uh, for aesthetic purposes, and that's fine. Your body will get to that. However, it's going to deal with the most detrimental, the most deadly of the, uh, the fat uh, sources, which is in your organs. So your body is going to start to call, it's going to go through a process called lipolysis. Uh, lipolysis is the breakdown of fat for fuel. It's going to start to break down the fat in your liver. This is how fasting will help reverse fatty liver. It's going to start to break down the fat in your pancreas. This is how fasting helps reverse fatty pancreas. Uh, and you, most people are told that their, their pancreas uh, has burned out. And that's why you're not secreting enough insulin. This is not true. In most cases, uh, the pancreas is infiltrated with fat.
and this call this is called fatty pancreas so fasting will help you uh, release that fat inside of the pancreas so that's how fasting helps you reverse uh, fatty pancreas fatty liver also with fat loss next I want to talk about how fasting helps both men and women uh, in different ways so PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome is diabetes of the ovaries I have a video on that um, I will link that below in the description so PCOS is diabetes of the ovaries I consider it to be like type 4 diabetes um, and so we have to understand that the reason this is taking place is because high insulin levels will affect the pituitary gland and once the pituitary gland is affected by the high insulin levels it's going to uh, it's going to throw off the secretion of the LH and FSH LH stands for luteinizing hormone FSH is a uh, follicle stimulating hormone so make sure you watch the videos if you're interested in PCOS and uh, what to do about it make sure you watch that video that I made uh, like I said I'm going to post that below or somewhere around here uh, so fasting will help decrease the amount of insulin uh, that is affecting the pituitary gland when this is taking place this is going to help reverse the condition called PCOS make sure you check out that video if you're interested in it but at the same time PCOS also has uh, a male version called gynecomastia or hypogonadism where the pituitary gland in the male is also affected by high levels of insulin and so uh, just like PCOS women will start to exhibit more male-like characteristics uh, with gynecomastia or hypogonadism, men will start to exhibit more feminine characteristics. And this is because of the high levels of insulin. Well, guess what fasting does? Fasting helps you dramatically decrease your insulin levels. When that takes place, the effects that you had from the PCOS and hypogonadism will now be reversed. And you will now be able to get your menses back on, uh, on cycle. Uh, you will also decrease a lot of the other side effects of the PCOS and gynecomastia. Next, fasting increases HGH. Um, so there's different reports as far as how much HGH uh, is increased during the hours of fasting. But what you need to know is that it dramatically increases HGH. We're talking by some reports say 500%, some reports say 2,000%. Whatever it is. It increases it dramatically uh, the reason why this is important is because uh, most of us are low in HGH at an early level you know you shouldn't really see uh, you should not see a decrease HGH level in your 30s or in your 40s um, and HGH is important for both men and women uh, particularly I want to talk to men and so when it comes to HGH and our ability to gain muscle mass you need uh, more levels, higher levels of HGH. However, when you have high levels of insulin, you're going to have lower levels of HGH, and this also ties back into the hypogonadism, and also ties back into the uh, uh, the gynecomastia, and so, and this also ties back into your your uh, erectile dysfunction as well. So these things are all important, and fasting helps you increase. Uh, HGH as well too, uh, which also helps you increase more muscle mass, but you have to work out. It's not like it's just magical. You have to work out. Um, and so that's important. And then to kind of wrap everything up, uh, one thing, something that's extremely uh, specific and unique to uh, fasting is that it is the only thing shown to increase longevity. Fasting is the only thing shown to actually help you live longer. Your medications can't say that. Uh, your procedures can't say that. Uh, nothing else can say that other than fasting. So I want you to look at all of the benefits that I just listed for fasting. Let me let me come in and run down. And I'm freestyling this, so it's, I may be off uh, out of order. Uh, but so one, fasting helps improve and reverse insulin resistance. Uh, two, fasting will help improve and reverse uh, high blood sugar slash type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. Three, fasting will decrease inflammation. Uh, with decreasing inflammation, we're talking about decreasing the, the pain that you're having with the, your joints. Also, uh, inflammatory bowel syndrome and so many uh, inflammatory conditions. Uh, four, fasting helps decrease cholesterol. Uh, 
And then when we're talking about decreasing cholesterol, we're also talking, I'm putting it in a broad category of decreasing the uh, LDL, increasing HDH, also decreasing the triglycerides, um, and also decreasing uh, arteriosclerosis. Uh, five, fasting will help decrease high blood pressure. Uh, and so we talked about how the high insulin levels causes stiffness. Uh, that stiffness is also going to cause damage in the arteries, which is going to cause plaque. Uh, and this is all going to cause, call, this is all going to make your body have to increase the blood pressure. Uh, with this increase in blood pressure, you're going to see that uh, your doctor is going to try to prescribe you medications for it. But just know that your blood pressure is high for a reason. And so even with those two, we now have to make a new number six because uh, the cholesterol, the LDL, the HDL, the triglycerides, the high blood pressure, and also the inflammation and the oxidative stress, when you combine all of those, this helps decrease the rate of heart disease. Heart disease, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer uh, supposedly in this, in this country. Uh, well, fasting helps dramatically decrease your chance of uh, having a heart attack or having a stroke or having uh, any type of cardiovascular disease in general. And so that's number six. That's a new number six. Number seven, fasting helps out with weight loss. Uh, not just weight loss, but specifically fat, not just fat, but specifically visceral fat. So uh, we talked about how fasting uh, will uh, decrease the amount of glucose, which will lead to uh, utilizing the glycogen in your liver. And over time, your body will need more fuel, and that fuel is going to come from the, the fat in your organs. And so let's keep it going. Number eight, it's going to help decrease fatty liver. Number nine, it's going to help decrease fatty uh, pancreas. Number 10. Fasting is going to help improve and or reverse uh, PCOS as well as gynecomastia slash hypogonadism. Uh, this PCOS is male, I'm sorry, PCOS is uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, something that uh, affects women who have insulin resistance, and gynecomastia slash hypogonadism is something that affects men. Uh, and fasting helps improve and or reverse that those uh, issues. Next, fasting will help increase HGH, human growth hormone, as well as muscle mass. And then finally, fasting is the only thing that has been shown to actually help you live longer, increase your lifespan. All right. So these are all things that are very unique and specific to fasting. Fasting is an incredible tool that I recommend uh, that we all do specifically in our community because many of the conditions that we uh, have plaguing us are uh, are sitting on the foundation of insulin resistance. And so this is why fasting is my gospel. This is why I recommend fasting so much because I know for a fact that if our community embrace fasting uh, as, a, uh, as a habit, as a lifestyle, we will be able to improve the health conditions of our community overnight because most of the conditions are coming from insulin resistance. Uh, fact that fasting is practical, it's sustainable, uh, and if you have any questions about how to fast, we do a program every month called the Fast Life 28 Day Challenge. Trust me, trust me, if you are affected by any of these conditions that I spoke about, this is the program you want to be in. You want to come in and get that knowledge. You also want to come in and get the tips, uh, the practical skills uh, that we're going to give you in that challenge. We have a, uh, a membership group of over 200 people now in the Facebook channel, in the Facebook group. Uh, you get three coaches. We're going to walk you through this program. Uh, we're going to hold your hand as much as possible on a virtual level to help you radically improve fasting. We're going to, help, we're going to show you how to weaponize fasting. Uh, we're going to show you just how easy and sustainable fasting is and how it can radically improve your health. Um, I mentioned the Facebook group because, you know, it's one thing to hear us say it, but if when you go into that Facebook group, you're going to see over 200 people who have utilized fasting to radically improve their health. If you are dealing with any of those conditions, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? This is an online program you can do wherever you at and you will get great benefits if you stick to the protocol, if you stick to the rules. So make sure you click the link in the description to check out the Fast Life 20 Day Challenge and uh, let us know if we can help you anymore. All right, buddy. So that wraps everything up. Um, I just want to, you know, get that off my mind. Uh, I'll come back and I'll do a video on each of these uh, conditions separately. Uh, but right now, before I went into the gym, I just wanted to go ahead and get that off my mind. I'll let everybody know that fasting is extremely beneficial. 
uh, fasting has been around for a very long time. It's safe and it's effective, uh, but you have to do it in a safe and effective way. And that's why we created the Fast Life 20 Day Challenge. Uh, within the Fast Life 20 Day Challenge, you're going to get uh, three coaches. You're going to get myself, I'm Emma Williams. I'm a licensed physician assistant, as well as a health coach, uh, nutritionist, personal trainer. You're also going to get access to Kathleen Richardson, who is an African holistic wellness coach. You're also going to get access to Tiffany Davis, who is an African holistic chef. And the three of us combined, we're going to give you so much resources, so much compassion and love, and so much guidance. Uh, but not only that, you're going to get access to a membership area that's going to have videos uh, to help educate you on fasting and uh, just health in general. But not only that, you're going to get access to the Facebook group where you're going to meet well over 200 people who have been through this process and have had their life, uh, lives dramatically improved by using fasting. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you are dealing with any of those conditions, um, you have to look into fasting at least. You have to at least explore uh, the possibilities of fasting. And when you get to the point where you want to now take on the, uh, the habit of fasting, check out our program, the Fast Life 20 Day Challenge. Uh, this is a program that we're doing every month. Uh, it's 28 days. Um, and we will help you get to where you want to go. But you have to join the challenge first, okay? So um, that's it. I just want to make sure you all are well aware of the benefits of fasting. Once again, I'm going to come back and independently uh, list out uh, the benefits of fasting for each quote unquote condition. And uh, I'll leave some resources and some tight citations for you to check out independently. Uh, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a lot of information from the video. And uh, please, 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 please check out the challenge. Subscribe to the channel. And remember, this is our community. It is our responsibility. We have what it takes. Let's get it. All right. Peace.